Jungle tracking is simultaneously simple but also quite complex depending on your elo of play. From proactive tracking to reactive tracking, let's see how well you can jungle track and let's see if we can get everyone to become the better jungler to become the hunting jungler in every game you play. And on screen now, we will see the Viego no enemy jungle perspective for now, we'll leech into that in a second. And I've covered up the minimap so you won't be able to cheat and see which camps have been taken from the enemy Diana. Runes obviously were on your screen, we know the matchup, it's obviously a Viego, you guys love Viego, you guys love Diana, which makes this all the more realistic for your matchups and playstyle. It's not going to be a decision making video, but I will pose some questions just so you can knowledge check yourselves. At this point, Viego has done the red, has done the Raptors, hopefully you would have noticed, hey look, the enemy bottom lane didn't leash, they were cheesing each other bottom lane, the enemy top laner didn't leash, neither did the mid laner, that means Diana went leashless. At this point, your jungle tracking is relatively simple. I have no idea where she started. I had no level one wards. I can only guess and suppose that she started red and is going to basically try and fake me out and then sequence up. So what the Viego does is he does red, raptors, and goes for the invade. The most important part about tracking is vision. You need visual confirm, and that's a term I've come up with that basically means I track and anticipate the enemy jungler to do X, but I can only know for sure if they've done that once they show up on vision and I can gather the information at hand. First step is vision. Now that can be minions, wards, doesn't really matter, but that's why I like having the warding totem and not the scanner early against farming junglers, because leaving a ward behind when you counter jungle like this aggressively, or simply if you want to sequence with them and leave it for the second rotation, it basically gives you all the visual confirm you need. However, Diana shows up in the mid lane, let's pause, you will see this on your screen now. The biggest reason why most of you cannot track, and the second biggest reason why most of you cannot track is one, you don't pay attention to visual confirm because you miss the triggers or you don't ward enough, and two, you simply don't press tab. Go ahead, what can you tell from the situation? She has 12 CS, she shows mid lane, she only has a red buff because we used our F keys to click around, Viego is taking a blue and grump, what three camps did she do to get 12 CS? And yes, you would have noticed that Lucian warded the Raptor pit for us, so we know that that was taken 100%. Basically, all you can know at this point is she most likely did Red Krug's Raptors. However, the alternative strategy is that she solo started Wolves Raptors Red. Either way, she can now look to counter jungle us, vertical jungle us, and gank bottom lane. So what Viego does is checks the wolf camp to make sure it's basically down, or if it's up, he can snack it for full vertical jungling. Now, we know Diana 100% will go to the bottom side. A bot lane is pushing, she's going to gank it. She does so thusly. Pressing tab, you still see 12 CS. Nothing has changed, there's nothing for her to take. At this point, would you prefer to try and match the Diana and protect your blue side so that you can 3-quadrant her, or would you like to gank the Heimerdinger versus Soraka? Look, the benefit here is we have Lucian mid, and he can fight the Yasuo pretty easily in game prior, which means we can actually rotate with him down. And before you start commenting, yes, I've coached enough now at this point, almost a thousand sessions with low and mid in my place as well as high elo, to know that mid laners do like to rotate and get kills themselves, mm -hmm. you just have to make the right play. So in this case, the Diana, instead of, you know, trying to take blue and grump and me collapsed upon because most likely she is looking at the Viego, she decides to chase down the level 1 vein considering she's level 3, but doesn't pay attention to death timers on the Leona, it's early game, and doesn't watch the fact that Lucian has left mid lane and hasn't paid attention to where the Viego might be. Now what Viego is going to do is move on down here and kill the Jinx and then grab himself a double kill. So great rotation, great decision, using his lane prior for that. Let's assess this from the Diana's point of view now. Viego shows bot lane with 16 CS, he has a blue buff, he has a red buff, what did his clear actually involve? We obviously know, but the Diana can simply click on the Viego, look at the debuff timer on his blue, and you can do this in-game obviously in the top left, see that it's halfway down, which means there's no way he sequenced down for a full clear, did his blue, and then ganked that bottom lane. No, 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 he stole the Diana's blue, so Diana knows this. With that presupposition in mind, from Viego's point of view, which direction do you think Diana's going to go next? Well, yeah, basically, if she understands that the Viego gank bottom lane will take the bottom crab, Diana can essentially go to the top crab, secure that herself, and then fall back to take her Grump and Wolves, perhaps. So she must go top side, going bottom side here, with the Raptor camp being the second thing done, as we would have calculated her Wolves Raptor's red clear. It means that she only has level 1 Krugs, and that would be kind of griefing, knowing that there's a top crab, and a second spawn Wolf, and a second spawn Raptor camp coming up. However, because we're doing our blue side as Viego and basically sequencing up now, we could basically guess that the Diana has tracked this, and might even be looking to steal our level 4 raptor camp. That is a possibility, no doubt. So with that in mind, we have two possibilities of where the Diana can go. It's only upon visual confirm that we will know exactly what she's done and then we can adapt our strategy. If she does what we predict, we can play around it. If she does something random, we can recalculate and reassess. And that's the point of jungle tracking. The first is proactive, the second is reactive. 
Well, 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 Diana shows bot lane, goes for a gank, dives, and dies. Hopefully you recognize I went with a game where randomness is something you could identify with. Mm-hmm, yes. So all you can know at this point is Diana shows with 20 CS diving bot lane, which means she did two more camps since she died, because she had 12 when she died, and we would have known that. As soon as a jungler dies or disappears from the map, and you'll notice the question mark on the scoreboard every time that happens, you can press tab, look at OCS, project where she's going next, and when she shows up again, press tab, and look at the difference. We'll have another example of that very shortly, but basically Vieco can know at this point she didn't do crab, she didn't do raptors, the only way the timing works here is if she did Raptors again, Wolves, and then gank bottom lane, which means we can take Raptors, we can take Scuttlecrab, and we can take her Grump again. Now, unfortunately, Diana's not playing very well and goes mid lane to help push that wave while her mid laner wants to reset. Viego would fall back and take the Crab, but sees action on the mid lane and reactively paths. If you want to understand how to gank and what this means, I just released an absolute full ganking guide on my channel a few days ago, and I will leave that in the top right for you. But because she died with 20 CS, and she shows up again with 20 CS, and then she dies again with 20 CS, it means she hasn't farmed anything. Diana likewise should have recognized that when the Viego killed her bottom lane and had 16 CS, he then did Scuttle 20, Blue 24, Grump 28, Wolves 32, Raptors 36, and then probably took either the Scuttle Crab or the Grump to get to 40 CS. The Diana basically says, I'm just going to go to the bottom side of the map, this is the wrong decision, because if she pressed tab and recognized this, she'd also recognize that Viego hadn't even gone back to base yet to buy any items. And Viego left his warding totem in the Grump area, such that if she does decide to go up here, we will see her. So if she doesn't show on that ward, she is on the bottom side. Pressing tab and visual confirm gives you everything you need to know from direct evidence to indirect evidence, and that's how we track. Now, much like a low elo jungler, the Diana decides, hey, that red buff is spawning, I'm behind, let me go in a nice invade, I'll gank mid first, again, still 20 CS. No farming at all, absolutely horrific, painful, and depressing jungling. But if you go objectively watch a bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond game, these things aren't being punished as much by you, and that's why this tracking is so vital. Now, if you have the ward on the grub and you are the Viego, and you know it's not up because you have the timer, 2 minutes 15, we know that that crab is still available on the top side. So Diana should go from 20 to 24 to 28 on the wolves because grub is unavailable. We can use this information to now go fist to Leno, knowing the enemy jungler cannot match, cannot 2v2, and won't be in the area. We are Viego, we have E, we can navigate those scuttle crab vision, no problem. Diana shouldn't see it unless she clicks and actually has a look, which she kind of should if she's F king around, knowing Viego was topside, but c'est la vie. There is a push mid lane. Remember from the ganking video, the push lane doesn't mean you can't gank it, you can. But the point of this isn't to gank it necessarily. It's to create and use the prior we have from Lucian to move into her red side jungle, knowing Diana's going to be there. We move into the jungle, Diana rotates to the mid lane to help. Basically 36 CS means she went from 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, the red is done. We see the enemy bot lane use their pride to move on up to us. Leona is a human being and has decided to understand this and follow, which is very nice. If a vein can stay bot lane, who cares? We use this to trap the Jinx and make sure she goes back to base so she cannot be involved and won't get some free resets. And now we rotate to the fight where the Blitzcrank is and we try out a 3v3. We see how it goes, but you do have to understand and play this correctly. Obviously, at some point, mechanical power, PvP sense, prowess, yada yada, that's all going to make a big difference. And if you win this, Unfortunately, we do not, and that is okay. Diana should press tab and see the Viego has 48 CS. The Viego should press tab and see the Diana has 39 CS. That is now our baseline. The next time they have visual confirm, we can predict and calculate what cams they have. And yes, we have to do that while still playing the game. So in which direction do you think the Diana will go? Yeah, obviously she's gonna go to the top side. She was just sequencing down. She took those camps and not gonna respawn. For once, her blue and grub are available to her, but we have some exquisite warding control in that area. Now keep your eyes on this. She clears the ward that takes her to 40. We're gonna do our Krugs. We're gonna gank top lane. Very, very nice. Great success. And then we're gonna fall back to our jungle. Watch the turret damage, of course. Diana will show with 48 CS, indicating she did blue and grub. She has the blue on her as well. She pushes this wave. And now as the question mark falls over her detection radius, you press tab again, have a look. 54 CS. So even though she did camps and now CS, it's not as random as you think. You can still say, right, 54 CS. I know she did that. I know she has no blue and grub. What will she do next? She clears another ward. That, of course, adds one CS. We go mid lane and use the fact that she's not here to get ourselves a few more kills and decimate the enemy team's morale and, of course, infuse our own ego. From this, we can translate this to a Herald or we can translate this to a Dragon. In this case, while I do love the Herald, I'm doing a does have permanent prior on the bottom side, and of course with the vein it's easier just to fall back down to the ocean dragon, and that's fine considering our team comp and the fact that we have a Soraka, good value. Diana holds the mid lane and goes up, so once more you can press tab C63 CS and that's always in our mind. At this point we know she's gonna go up because there's no reason for her to come down. We have all the numbers here, we're gonna do the dragon, we can easily invade a red side jungle afterwards. What she can do is take the herald and use it on the top lane, or she can just hold on to it. 
Now you're kind of trying to guess what would she do if I was her. But at the same time, she might just try and contest a dragon and die for it. You just have to be ready for these opportunities and keep pressing tab and tracking the CS to predict what she's done and where she'll go next. Really, it's that easy. And obviously, visual confirmed through wards keeps you updated to this. If you don't have any visual confirm and they disappear for minutes on end and just end up with 20 more CS, you know they most likely did a full clear plus a buff, for example. Here we can fall back to our blue side, do whatever camps we want. If we know that the Diana does the Herald, which of course it dings on the map, you know that that's 4 CS, 63 to 67. And we know we have Tempo to go and gank bot lane again. A nice and juicy and simple slithery lane gank. You kill the Jinx once, you kill them some more mid lane, why not kill them a third time? Offset the Herald play by essentially getting a whole bunch of plates the manual way, and it can definitely work like this, because the enemy jungler is always lagging behind your decisions, and you know exactly what she's done and where she is. And when she shows bot lane again with 67 CS, we know she did only the Herald and nothing else. Dragons and Heralds, 4 CS each. Obviously, she overcommits, you kill her with a nice little dive, you take a whole bunch of plates, and because she was top lane for so long, because she went mid lane to hold the wave and then went back up to the Herald, you'd expect her Krugs and Raptors to be up. And then you realize that they're all gone, and on that great disappointment, you go back to base, but you also now know that the enemy laners took her camps. You also know that Dinah will know those camps are gone, and so she will go to the top side, because she has nothing on the bottom side, except for that juicy respawning red buff. So why don't we sequence down, use our lead to snack some camps, snack the random RNG crap, nice blessed experience that it is, use our roaming support which we have created, a monster we created ourselves, to take her red buff. We see bottom lane over committing, over pushing, let's go kill them again. Now you're playing your own game and you're just kind of keeping track of the Dinah as you go along, but you're still thinking about where she is, where she's going to go, because while you would have seen that, she 100% uses the Herald, crashes at her mid lane, you see the Heimerdinger top lane, you kind of know that the Dinah is going to try and do something here because we literally saw her move from mid lane into the Raptor pit. So you shadow this, you defend your camps, you kill the Heimerdinger, Diana shows up in a bush, set a trap, and actually rotates to the fight. And here you just have to outplay it, you have to win it, because you know she is in the area. We saw her, this has nothing to do with CS tracking, this is using your eyeballs, your F keys, and your minimap. And now you can keep pressing tab and CS tracking throughout the mid game, throughout as we go from the early game to the mid game here, but it's more about direction and sides. Is she gonna go to the bottom side? Why? Is she gonna go to the top side? Why? Think about the objectives. Think about laners who are pushing beyond vision that might be candy on the map for her. Do you want to shatter your laners in that case and counter gank it and just destroy her and then push towers? Do you perhaps want to say, hey, listen, my vein is over pushing bot lane, not grouping. Dana most likely is going to go for that, but a second Herald is up, a Baron is up. Let's just take that. Maybe your top laner is just simply Giga Hellbreaker strong, and of course your Diana plus mid laner has to rotate to deal with them, and you can say, you know what, instead of shadowing and trying to rotate to that across the map, I'm just going to take the dragon, take her jungle camps, and push the waves in the middle of the bottom lane. So you can either shadow, follow, and destroy, or you can set traps in the enemy jungle and hunt as your laners push towers and use the fog of war to your advantage, or you can just keep taking opposite things from the map that help you close games, but remember, you do have to be involved. You want to do the most damage. You can't let them get free picks on your team whatsoever. You are still the leader of this team, and you need to make sure you're not necessarily pressing tab to track the CS here. You're just kind of tracking sides, where they want to go. How can I stop it? How can I just keep killing her and not letting her get anything? That's what you're kind of using in this mid-game tracking phase. And while it doesn't always go perfectly, and the Viego's build is only what I can call absolute and utter cringe. Yeah, I don't know. So many great choices, and this guy decides to go that build. Anyway, jungle tracking in this kind of form is really your first 50 minutes kind of stuff. Now you develop sort of macro concepts, and basically what I was discussing there was macro late game stuff. So hopefully that gives you a nice look at jungle tracking and how you can use it by asking questions, pressing tab, using visual confirm and doing some basic arithmetic centered around your four times table. If you want to know more about the mid game and late game macro tracking and moves you need to close the game, click the video in the top right. And if you want to understand how to gank like a Chad and make sure that every jungler bows down to your ganking ability, click the video in the bottom right.